In the past two decades, one of the natural niche habitat of the yeast that we study actually has been identified in tempera forest and specifically on different species of oak trees. So while we study yeast for, for many decades in the lab, most of the time we actually use them in a sort of a clean and clonal population. But this is not what they are really exposed in real life. So uh, yeast are part of many microbiome of plants and animals, and essentially they are uh, interacting with uh, complex microbial communities. And this is really what we want to take on with the uh, input science funding to understand the mechanistic effect of species-species interaction. So essentially by sequencing the genome of all these individuals that were collecting on these uh, brown dots, um, analyzing the genetic uh, polymorphism, so the variation in, in the genome, we can reconstruct the relatedness among them and we can sort of infer how uh, these have been dispersed throughout uh, uh, space and time. Our team is interested in uh, understanding uh, natural variation that uh, is present in a population of individuals and uh, we study this through uh, genomics. So we uh, identify patterns of uh, genetic variation that are present uh, in a population and eventually understand how this translate into different characteristics between individuals. And we use the body Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is a powerful model system to understand these patterns of genetic variation. And then in fact, if we saw them, uh... If you see them, uh, it's a fluorescent system where she can track at the single cell level the mating strategies uh, in yeast by analyzing the fluorescence uh, uh, patterns. So this is the first time we are able to see this in, uh, in the single cell level and through space and time. And uh, within the input science, what Chiara is going to investigate is how interaction with other microbes are going to shape this pattern of uh, mating. I think there are many aspects that fascinate me uh, about yeast, but perhaps if I have to pick one, it's really this aspect of uh, the human interaction. So through the genomics, we've been able to reconstruct the past and the history of the species. So if we compare uh, yeast that are found in domestic environments versus the one that are present in the wild, they are completely different. He has exposed yeast to other things, like for example, to antifungals that are used in agriculture. And you can see in the genome actually the signature of the exposition. One of the key problems uh, in human health is actually is, uh, uh, the emergence of uh, drug resistance, for example, antibiotic resistance in, in bacteria. Uh, but it's also is a problem in cancer. So one of, uh, one of the key problems is actually is when we, we cure cancer with, with a drug, there is this emergence of drug resistance and cells uh, can escape. Uh, the action of drugs. So we've been using yeast as, again, as an evolutionary model to understand how uh, drug resistance evolves. Input science represents a fantastic opportunity for our team at uh, many levels. First of all, scientifically, it will enable us to enter into a new research area for us. The other thing will enable us to upgrade our experimental and computational setup and also will bring stability in, in the team. And most of them are uh, non-permanent researchers. So these are PhD and postdocs that uh, spend four or five years in the lab and uh, the input science funding will, will help to stabilize this uh, situation during the course of the grant. I think the favorite part of my job is really when we realize we have discovered something novel and perhaps unexpected. And the feeling that it gives you, I think, is, uh, is probably the best part of our job, uh, for sure.